Equidox. Bionics. Accessible PDF conversion. Reach. Everyone. This is a recording of the virtual Equidox PDF software remediation demonstration, given to coincide with CSUN ATC conference, in March, 2020. Equidox is a web-based software tool that converts inaccessible PDFs into accessible documents that can be understood by assistive technology. It's really fast, very easy, and you can learn the basics in under an hour. Once I've drug and dropped it into the gray area, you'll see this green check mark indicating that the document is uploaded to the cloud and ready to be imported. So when I press that blue import button, what this does is it is going to kick off an automated process where Equidox is starting to read through the existing file. So any tag structure that may be present, um, it's gonna start identifying different elements within the document and basically just try to apply a little bit of automation and some magic behind the curtain uh, so that our job as a remediator is that much easier as we go through page by page. Now, if you don't have the source file downloaded to your hard drive, but perhaps it is posted somewhere to a website or to an LMS and you can retrieve that URL. You can also take the URL and just copy and paste it into this field. And then that import process works exactly the same way uh, where Equidox will go and retrieve that document and bring it into the system. Uh, so that can be very helpful. Perhaps you've just completed a, an audit of your website and you might have like a CSV file with a bunch of URLs of inaccessible PDFs. Uh, you can very quickly get those into Equidox without having to fill up your hard drive with a bunch of files that you want to just uh, import into the tool. So uh, the notifications tool, this is just letting me know that that document has been imported. Um, so that's not overly exciting, pretty self-explanatory. Um, we can come back and talk a little bit more about settings and help. I'm really uh, looking forward to getting into the actual document though. Um, so here we are back on the main documents page and we can see that we have that document that I've just imported is now at the very top of the list. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just jump into this document here and open up the document detail page. So at the document detail page, um, I get a little bit more information about this file. Um, so I can see here mainly that this is a one page document. I, I have a thumbnail for just the first page. If this was a 20 page document, all 20 thumbnails would have, would have uh, would appear across this bar here, and I'd be able to navigate to any of those documents. Some simple metadata will populate down here about the document, the title of the file, the default language, and things like that. Uh, we're not gonna focus too much on that for right now. We're gonna keep it pretty simple. Um, more than happy to have more in-depth discussions um, on a future more one-on-one -on -one personalized demo if anyone is interested in talking more about workflows and how this might exactly pertain to your organization. So um, also just wanted to briefly mention the images tab, which is, another, uh, which is another tab available here at the document detail level. So the images tab is actually really, really helpful. Um, in this case, being only a one page document with just one image in the document, uh, perhaps you don't see exactly the ROI that this can actually provide. But what the images tab does is it will actually consolidate all of the images in the document here in one location for the user. So there's a lot of ways that this can be used to speed up the remediation process. Uh, mainly, if you're familiar with the document, if you can look at the thumbnail and see exactly what that image is and you know how to describe it, you can go through and start applying your alt text right from this one centralized location to really streamline your approach and how you're handling the images. And then once you're in the document, you're just focusing on the text elements, knowing that your images are taken care of. Another great advantage to this is the ability to hide all images. So perhaps you have that uh, report that has the exact same logo uh, or seal of the organization that appears on every single page. Well, if it's, if it's a 100-page document, uh, it is, of course, redundant to tag a 100 uh, occurrences of the same logo with the exact same alt description. So in that case, you can hide all zones, uh, which is effectively marking them decorative or archiving that actual uh, image. And what you can do then is just uh, uncheck the first one on the very first page and tag that image uh, one time, knowing that the rest of those images are not going to be left with a blank alt text, which would ultimately 
um, leave that document inaccessible uh, and be flagged by you know, future audits or accessibility scans of that document. So th that's a great way to handle your images. Another great thing is if you're not familiar with the document, perhaps it's you know, a complicated subject, you don't know anything about the images, their, their diagrams or charts that are very complex, well, you can always share the document with someone who does know more about the, the actual document, whether it be the professor uh, or just someone who is more of an expert in that field. And they can come in and they can take the time to describe those images without necessarily having to remediate every page of the document. But you then as the remediator know that your images are handled uh, with accurate alt descriptions. And then you can focus on just setting up the structure of the document in terms of heading structure, reading order, list, tables, et cetera. So there is so much to talk about with the images tab because images are such a crucial part of PDF accessibility. Um, but that's about all I'll say for that right now. I'm more than happy to talk more about this tab later. Uh, and by the way, if there's any questions throughout this demo, uh, please feel free to just type those questions into the chat field. Uh, we do have someone monitoring the, the chat. So if there's any questions, we're gonna try to save, you know, at least five, or five to 10 minutes at the end of this to, to go over any questions. Um, so the next thing I want to mention before we get into the actual document is the output. So this is another uh, feature of Equidox that makes us somewhat unique. We have the ability to export the file as an HTML document, uh, PDF, or EPUB. So we remediate the document one time, and we can have three separate formats from that one remediation process. So you have the option to export the file as any or all three of these formats. You don't have to do anything special to any of the uh, formats to get the, to get the file out of the system in that desired format. So it's as simple as naming the file and hitting download HTML uh, or generate PDF. And Equidox will produce a brand new PDF document for you that will have all of the tag structure that is reflected in the way that you set up the zone structure in the document itself. Um, so speaking of setting up the document, um, let's get into this actual one page document that we have here. So when I click on the thumbnail of that first page, uh, I am now presented with the actual page editor um, and I can see the document that, um, that I have in front of me here to work on. And the first thing that I'm noticing are all of these yellow boxes that are now appearing all over the page. So this is what happened during the import process. This document was completely untagged to start with. So there was no tag structure whatsoever. Um, so this is uh, what Equidox does during import. It's actually recognizing that there is data on the page and it's giving us, it's giving us paragraph structure. Uh, it's starting to draw zones. It's identifying things like images, and links even. Um, so the links and the images are detected on that import process. But it's our job as a remediator to fix up this structure a bit to make this more accessible than it currently is. So the first thing I want to mention is the ability to preview any page that we are working on in HTML. So this button up here in the upper right hand corner that looks kind of like a computer monitor, what this does is it allows us to open up a preview, uh, a separate tab of the page that we're looking at, and we get to see HTML structure um, of that data on the PDF page. Now, this is important because HTML is very easy to work with and understand. It's very linear and it's very uh, clean and simple. So we have a, a lot of control over HTML because it is truly a what you see is what you get type of format. So what I'm really trying to do as a remediator is not necessarily interact, interact directly with the tag tree, uh, but what I'm trying to do is get my HTML structure here on this, on this PDF preview page to actually match the structure that I see in the source file. So what I'm noticing in that preview page is all of these individual uh, text boxes are giving me way too many paragraphs or P tags. So I'm gonna to have to clean up some things here with, uh, within this document. And the way that I'm gonna to start to do that is the first thing I wanna do is come up here in the upper left and I'm gonna to go to the page tab where I can make changes at the page level. So the first thing I wanna do is use the auto detection sensitivity slider. So this, this tool right here, what this does is if I move this slider back and forth, this allows me to change the granularity of those reading zones based on how much I slide it left and right. 
So the ultimate idea here is to really just find a better starting point if you're not satisfied with the way that Equinox automatically detected that data on import. So just by sliding that sensitivity slider around, you can see how much has changed about the, uh, the, the paragraph structure that I'm seeing here on this page as it sits right now. So we remember what that preview looked like before where we had everything, every individual line segmented into their own paragraph tag. But if I preview it again, we're gonna see something that matches uh, much more closely with the structure that we're looking for. So we've gotten rid of all those extra P tags, and now we're looking at something that's closer, but not quite perfect just yet. So back to the PDF page, we're gonna fix a few more things. Uh, the first thing I want to worry about, uh, which is uh, obviously one of the pillars of PDF accessibility is that heading structure. So in the upper left-hand corner of every zone, you will see a TX, um, by default in the event that the document is not tagged at all, meaning that it had no existing heading structure or list structure or anything like that. So TX is standing for text. And what we can do here to, to change that text zone to an actual heading, uh, because in the, in the event or in the case of this document, I wanna set this zone as my heading level one. So what I can do is I see over here underneath the zone properties that this is currently set as a text zone type. So I'll hit this drop down menu and I will select heading from that drop down. And now you can see it says H1 in the upper left hand corner instead of TX. So before we move on, let's just take another quick look at the preview. And you can see that that font size has actually increased to reflect the change in the zone type. So even though I might not necessarily understand the ins and outs of that tag tree that we all, we all have to deal with in Adobe Acrobat, um, I'm able to see my changes to the PDF come to life here in this HTML preview because I get that visual feedback from HTML that I do in fact have a heading level set on this specific zone because the font is so much larger. So now let's worry about some of these other heading levels. So like the heading level twos and threes, for example, and we'll finish up the heading structure and move on to other elements. So I can hit the drop down menu uh, again. I can hit the drop down menu and change this to a heading and then underneath heading properties, I can manually change that to a two. Or what I can do is I can actually just use my keyboard and uh, type er, and I'll hit the key three uh, to set a heading level three in this case. So keyboard shortcuts are really handy. They help you go a little bit quicker. Um, and uh, it's just a faster way of handling your heading structure. Another cool thing that we have that we can maybe get into um, you know, on a future demo that we have more time to expand on is the ability to set a heading template. So if I choose my H3 as a template and I select this checkbox, Equidox will look forward in the document and it will apply an H3 class to every zone that has these same properties set to it. So that's a really handy feature, especially when dealing with longer documents that may have potentially hundreds of heading level or hundreds of headings in that document. You can use Equidox to sort of uh, automate that process where you're choosing your heading structure on the first few pages and then letting Equidox apply the, that template to the rest of the document. So now that we have our heading level set, let's take another quick look. Again, we see the reflection in HTML where that font size is actually changed. And you can even look at the source code if you don't believe it. Um, we're not going to right now, we don't have to, uh, but you can actually see that the actual tag structure is changing behind the scenes. But we don't have to look at that because we have this nice clean HTML. Uh, we're able to rely on the feedback that we get um, and able to, to move forward uh, in the document. So now that I'm cleaning up this page, uh, especially my heading structure, the next thing that I'm looking at is this list, uh, which we see is currently just wrapped in one big text zone. Um, so this is not actually gonna be read uh, by a screen reader as a list at all. This is gonna be read as just some strange run on sentence of the five days of the week, really with no true list structure to it. So what I can do to change that is I can just select this zone and I'll hit the drop down menu and I will change it to a list. So by changing the zone type to list, you can see this little green bar that now comes down the left hand side of the zone. If I expand this, it'll get a little bit wider. Um, but you can see that green bar that is actually acting sort of as a, an eye for this list zone. It is looking for any list delimiters. In this case, they are bullet points. So all I have to do is line that green bar up with those list delimiters. And then this button over here underneath list properties 
allows me to press it and it will detect those list items. So you can see by just pressing that one button, Equidox has automatically drawn five uh, extra zones for me. So by doing that, uh, and just this layering effect of putting the list zone on top of those five list items, when we press the preview button, we will see that now I actually have actual list structure, whereas before it was gonna just be read as a run on sentence uh, with bullet points inserted in that sentence. So now these are actual five distinct list items, and all I really had to do was press one button to detect them. So that's a really, really helpful tool, especially when dealing with documents that have a lot of lists. If this list would have taken you a couple of minutes in working in Adobe Acrobat, um, we can actually now remediate it in Equidox in mere seconds. So if you apply that to potentially dozens or even hundreds of lists that could appear uh, throughout a document, um, that will save you tons and tons of time. So now the next uh, thing that I wanna tackle is the table. Uh, which we see the heading for the table right here. But then look at the way that this data is currently structured within that table. Uh, so not a table at all. So this is the reading order that is currently presented to the screen reader user if we were to export this document right now. You can see that this is a real mess, uh, very, very difficult to decipher, no way to deviate from this reading order. Because if we go back to the PDF, you see every cell is really recognized as an individual P tag. So this reading order is going to be very, very complicated to decipher and draw any useful information from. So what we can do is instead of worrying about these individual zones that are covering every cell, I'm just going to draw one zone around the entire table. So by doing that, I'm just clicking and dragging and expanding the zone to match the size of the table. And now I can hit the drop down menu and change the zone type to table. And when I do that, I now have the ability to open up the table editor. So by opening the table editor, um, you can see that Equidox has actually drawn some of these green grid lines for me. So it's tried to automate the process as best as it could. Uh, and it's done a pretty decent job, especially with the columns. Um, one thing I can do uh, if I'm not really satisfied with the way that the, the, the grid lines match up with the table is I can try to use our auto detection. So just by sliding these sliders around, it works very similar to how the sensitivity slider does for the for the zone detection on the main page. Uh, but what I can do is slide these around until I find a better setting that I'm more satisfied with. Um, so what's actually happening here is actually very technical computer vision uh, and a bit of machine learning uh, when we're actually changing an algorithm by moving these sliders around. So that's all very technical and complicated, but the actual end user doesn't really have to worry about that because all you have to do is just move this bar back and forth until you find a nice starting point where you don't have to make too many adjustments. Now, if you need to make any adjustments, you can always just click the grid lines and move them around. Uh, we have other features in here like the ability to nudge your rows. So if, if all of the rows are very much close, but maybe just a pixel or two off, you can nudge those rows, you can nudge those columns, and they all move in sequence. That comes, very in, uh, that comes in handy when you're dealing with larger tables that may have you know, hundreds of rows, and rather than adjusting every single one manually, you can just nudge them into place. So if we take a look at the preview now, we remember how terrible that table looked before, but now we actually have a table with scope. So this table uh, now has row and column headings, which are reflected by the bold text. So that top, that top row there is actually indicating the column headings, and that bold text is there to let us know that those are in fact the column headings. And same thing for this first column, these are the row headings. And then we see in our standard font, the actual text inside of the table, these are marked as table data. So as a user is navigating through, rather than having to guess at which, uh, at what this number is pertaining to, they now know that, that this is Sydney's height because we have the row and column headings to let us know that 5.10 actually is indicating her height. Um, and then we are uh, able to draw some actual conclusions from the table data rather than having to just guess what all of it means. Um, and now we have a perfectly accessible table. I can save the table and close out of the table editor. And I'm back to the main page where if you remember every one of those cells was uh, had an, its own individual P tag, those have now been overridden by just one clean table zone. So um, we are nearly done with this page. And uh, I will say that under normal circumstances, a page like this, we've been bouncing back and forth from the actual uh, page, uh, the preview page a lot. 
But under normal circumstances, this doc, this page would take you know merely a minute at the most uh, for a standard remediation process. Um, so we are moving pretty slow for demo purposes, but this is actually much, much easier to work through than it may look. Um, so uh, we're, we're left here with this one element at the very bottom of the page. Uh, we see we have a sentence with a link embedded inside of it. So this was actually detected by Equidox when we first imported the, the document. We have this link that's automatically detected and we can see over here the anchor for that link. So this is actually gonna take to us directly to um, the, our website. So we can set an anchor for any position. We can just type in whichever address we need something to go to. We can manually create links, but if those links are embedded in that source file, Equidox is going to detect them and give us that anchor uh, where it's, uh, where it's you know, destined to, to lead us to automatically. So we have the ability to do this manually, but letting Equidox do it automatically is really nice when the document actually has that link embedded. So I really don't have anything to do to that element. Um, we're, we're happy with the way it looks right now. Uh, the last thing that's on my mind is this image over here. Um, I needed a little bit more context from that document, uh, from the document detail page where I was looking at the images tab. Perhaps I don't know enough about this document or this image uh, to actually provide an alt description. So what I can do is come into the actual page. Maybe I need to read a little bit or learn a little bit about how this image um, actually relates to the context of the page. And here I'm able to actually provide my alt description. So just for demo purposes, I'm gonna just type in uh, black and white dog holding a briefcase. So nice simple description of that image uh, to provide some context. Again, if I, was, if I felt that this was just a decorative image, something that wasn't actually adding value to the page, what I could do is just hit the hide, uh, the hide zone checkbox. And by doing that, you'll see that that actual image zone has disappeared. And I would then be archiving that image, which is indicating to that screen reader to just pass over that decorative image. It's not actually adding any value. Uh, but I'm gonna leave it checked for now. Uh, and what I want to do is take another preview of the full page now that I've handled just about everything on the page. And what I'm seeing is nice heading structure. I see my heading structure is nice and clean. I'm seeing my paragraphs here reflected. Uh, I have my list right here, uh, which is looking good. Now my one concern is I have this table uh, heading and then I don't have my table that directly follows it. So what I've done is I've actually messed up the reading order a bit. Uh, because if you remember, I manually created that zone. So that put it at the very end of the reading order since I had to manually create it. So what I can do to fix that very quickly is just go to the page tab where we were doing the sensitivity slider before, and I'll just press the reorder button. So that reorder button is going to readjust that reading order um, to set it in the proper location so it will directly follow that table heading in, uh, after it belongs. So that's a, a quick way of dealing with reading order. And uh, now I see down here, I have my paragraph with the link embedded inside of it. And uh, this page is pretty much ready to go. Now, perhaps you are not satisfied with the reading order of the, uh, of the, the image of the dog. Um, so we have our heading level three, and then we have that image and then the text to follow. So what I can do in the, in the event where I have an element like this that doesn't necessarily naturally slot into the reading order, is I can choose where I want this to manually go. So I see that in the number in the right-hand corner of the zone, this is indicating the reading order of the document. So right now this is zone four, this is zone five, and this is zone six. So let's say for example, I want zone five to actually come after zone six. So if I were to do that, I could change this to zone six, but then I'd have to change this to seven and this to eight, so on and so forth. I don't wanna manually make all, that, all those adjustments. So what I'll do is I'll just select this zone and I'll change it from reading order five and I'll just type in 6.1. So I can actually use the decimal system to squeeze this zone in between two zones where I want it to go, um, but I don't have to then uh, manipulate the reading order for the rest of the page. So that's a really helpful tool and you'll see that it's actually allowing me to then set my reading order for those paragraphs and then I have my image and then I have my list and table to follow. So I'm pretty satisfied with that reading order and uh, that's about all I really have to do to this page. Um, so we were scheduled to go until 1.30. Uh, I have a few more minutes if anyone would like to ask any questions or Tammy, is, uh, has there been any questions posted to the chat that I can address before we wrap up?
Uh, there was a question about whether or not the reading order could be um, changed um, for images in the um, image tab. And I've answered that in the chat that, you know, all the reading order is handled at the page level. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we're good with that one. But if anyone else has any other questions, um, we're happy to, you know, field those now. And if anyone would like a more detailed demo, because obviously this is very high level and it's a very simple document, um, you know, give us your email and we're happy to schedule something with you. Um, we could also, um, you know, provide some, um, you know, additional information. And we also do offer trial versions um, in certain circumstances. So. Great. And one other element I will touch on is you might have been looking up at our logo up here, the Equidox by Onyx logo, um, and wondering why this was not included in the auto detection or recognized as an image. Uh, well, this is something that uh, is really embedded in the template of this document. So if I want to include this in the tagged reading order, what I can do to do that very simply is I can draw a zone around it and I can actually change the zone type to graphic. And by changing it to graphic, um, I now have the ability to add an alt description just the same as if it were an image. So I can type into this, this field, um, Equidox by Onyx logo. And now when I press the preview button, uh, my reading order is again gonna be a little bit um, out of order because that's slotted into the lowest available number in the reading order. If you remember when I moved the image of the dog, but here's a, basically a little screenshot of that logo, and it will have the alt description that I've provided um, included in that. So now that we're seeing the HTML preview page, when I if I were to go and export this document from Equidox, um, I would be able to export this file as this HTML page, um, and then I could post it or send it off wherever it needs to go. Um, if I were to export it as a PDF, which is probably our most popular export format, what Equidox is going to do is it's going to take all of the data that we've built here in HTML and it's going to automatically populate a PDF tag tree. So I, as the user, don't have to go through and manipulate this table. I don't have to go through and make sure that I have all of these list items tagged. I've used Equidox's tool set to do that. And Equidox, when I export the file, is going to automatically take all of this structure and populate a PDF tag tree. So it's saving us a ton of time um, as, as the remediator um, and also just really reducing the learning curve. You don't necessarily have to be an expert to understand heading structure, to understand that this looks like a proper table, whereas before everything was just stacked on top of each other. Um, it, it can be, you can be trained and learn the very basics of this very, very quickly. Um, so the scalability of Equidox is something that I definitely wanna to touch on. Uh, we work on a concurrent user model. So being web-based, that gives us a lot of flexibility. Um, so say, for example, you have 10 concurrent users. That means 10 people from your organization can be using it at any given time. Um, so it means that you can get this tool into the hands of a lot of other users that you might not want to go out and purchase a very expensive software that has to be installed on their local machine. Um, you can actually have a lot of people using this and sharing the account and jumping in and just remediating a few files that they might have just published before they get distributed and posted online. Um, just about anyone can get in here and add a ton of value to that document. Uh, Dan, um, I, I think um, unless you have anything more you wanna share on this document, it might be good to see maybe another table demo with a more complicated table. Sure, I can do that. So let's go find a document that has more complicated table. So this is um, visually not the scariest looking table, um, but it has the ability to show you a couple of extra features uh, within the table editor. So if I just draw a zone around this table here, I'm gonna press T, so I, I'm gonna use my keyboard shortcuts, open up the table editor, and we can see that Equidox drew some grid lines for us again. Let me see if it can do any better. Um, so just by adjusting a few of these, I think this has done a pretty nice job. I'm just gonna slide a couple of these into place. And I need one extra column right there. So I'm gonna hit C on my keyboard for an additional column. So let me take a look at the preview and see how this looks. 
So we have some basic table structure here. We're seeing that this sort of at least looks like a table. Um, over here, we have our row headings, which are different departments. And up here, we have our column headings, which I'm just right now seeing our years. And actually, it's splitting the actual data and putting it into two separate columns. So what I really need to do in this case is actually span across four separate columns for 2017 and 2018. So going back to the table editor to make sure that I have this one parent heading that is covering these four uh, individual columns, I'm gonna select above Q1 and I'm gonna hit shift on my keyboard and I will select above Q4. So now I have all four of those cells highlighted. And if I go to the actual cells tab, I can then span across those four columns. And I'll do the same thing for 2018. I will hold down shift and span across. So then when I look at the preview, you will see that I've brought those, um, all of those cells, I've now spanned across them and I just have one, uh, one table heading for, uh, for those four separate columns. Now the Q1s through Q4s, these are still in that standard font. So this is indicating to me that these are actually set as table data, when in fact they are actually um, a second row of column headings. So what I can do to fix that is go into the table tab and I can just change the column header from one to two. And by doing that, I'm telling Equidox that I want both rows or the top two rows to be my column headings. So when I press the preview button one more time, you'll see that now I in fact have um, two layers of column headings. So that way when a user is navigating this table, when they arrive at this number here, they no longer have to guess what that number pertains to. They know that this is department three, 2018 Q2, and that is the value associated with those, with those, uh, with those table headings. So this is a uh, nice clean table. And even though we have a little bit more complexity to it, it doesn't take but you know 20 to 30 seconds to actually set it up in real time. Um, and then we have the flexibility to, to do all kinds of things with the table editor, depending on how complex the, the table is. There are many, many ways to use this table editor to give you perfect structure to export to um, so that you don't have to do, um, you're making the document so much more valuable and usable to those end users um, and spending just a, a fraction of the time as you would doing this manually in Adobe Acrobat. Uh, one other cool thing about the table editor I can show you, which actually applies to any document, is the ability to actually inject custom information into the, tag, uh, the tagged reading order. So I have this blank cell up here. Let's just say, for example, uh, I wouldn't under normal circumstances, but what I could do is I could actually change the, the cell source to custom and I can actually type in any custom information that I'd like. Um, so it, for, for this example, I might say this cell was intentionally left blank. And then when I preview the table, you'll see that I've actually injected that text into the table. Now this isn't going to visually appear if I were to export this PDF, but it will appear in the tagged reading order so that you're able to inject additional context to an end user, or perhaps you have a very, very poorly designed table that has all kinds of uh, blank cells or missing headings. Um, there's all kinds of ways that people can design a table that leaves it very, very difficult to interact with, uh, with a screen reader, but you have the flexibility with Equidox to inject more information to make it easier to understand for that end user. And that can also be done at the page level too. Anywhere on a page, I can draw a zone. It doesn't have to be covering any text. I can always just press the custom zone source and I can type in any custom information and I can make that information appear in the tagged reading order. I can see it appear here in the HTML preview. Uh, I have a ton of flexibility with Equidox. Uh, there's so much more we can get into. Unfortunately, due to time constraints, we are just about out of time. Uh, but we have um, a lot of, we can have a lot more to talk about. So if you'd like to see any more information about Equidox, please leave that information in the chat and someone will reach out to you uh, to get in touch to set up another conversation or another demo to see how this looks uh, with documents that you might be familiar with uh, or to talk about workflows and how this might incorporate uh, into your existing process. So uh, with that said, I think we're just about out of time. Uh, so thank you very much for joining. Um, and Tammy, is there anything else before we wrap up?
Uh, no, I just say if um, you don't want to put your email in the chat, but you would like to speak with us, you can email us at equidoxsales at onyxnet.com. And Great. somebody will get back to you probably within 24 hours, usually same day. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Well, um, it was a pleasure virtually meeting all of you, and uh, I hope uh, everyone has a great rest of their day. Thank you, everyone. Using Equidox can save you so much time, so much money, and frees up your employees to do other tasks. Converting your documents into accessible formats allows you to be compliant with legal digital requirements and reach everyone in your target audience. Equidox is the right tool to help you do that. For more information about using Equidox to remediate PDFs, visit www.equidox.co or contact us at equidoxsales at onyxnet.com.